What up guys, this is going to be a quick video just about a program that I've been using called Spec in order to test the integrity of uh, the files in my music library. So, you know, I've been collecting music for a long time and I'm not sure where I've gotten many of the songs I've collected years ago. Um, you know, it could have been through a friend or through a music pool or I could have bought them. And so this is just going to be a quick guide on when I'm sort of culling through my library and kind of clean, cleaning it out, making sure that each file uh, is represented properly by its bitrate and to make sure that every track that I have is going to sound as good as it can uh, because I might be playing it on a system that matters. So the first is I don't have anything at the 64 kilobytes per second bitrate, but I do have a couple at 128. And so an example of when I might use one at 128 is I actually downloaded this track particularly off of Adobe. And so this was the only uh, file this was the only bitrate that they had, and like, and as you can see on this guide that I've downloaded here, um, the sh the cutoff should be about 16 kilohertz at 128 kbps bitrate, and as you can see, that does seem to be accurate, and so I can tell that this is you know not a 64 kbps track reencoded at you know 128 or something higher. Um, I have this track by Jero here that's at 192. And as you can see, it, the cutoff, it doesn't reach the potential cutoff that it could, which is supposed to be at 19 kilohertz. As you can see, it's actually very similar to the 128 that we had just looked at in the last track. So what this either tells me is that one, either the style of encoding um, has limited the 192 kbps to about 16 kilohertz, or it is just a 128 a kbps track that's been re-encoded in order to make it seem like a higher bit rate although i have noticed that there's a lot of 192s that um, don't reach up to its upper limit um, and which i don't really have a lot of experience with because i try not to play anything from 192 but you know every once in a while there's a track that's not commercially for sale or you know you you it was maybe even encoded by uh, analog uh, to uh, to digital using a turntable and a mixer so you just never really know you got to uh, work with what you have So here is an example of and this is one of my favorite songs actually a quick little trivia. This song was actually uh, Rated by Red Bull to be the number one progressive breaks track of all time But as you can see this does reach the upper limit of 19 kilohertz or at least very close to it So there's a big difference even though this Jero track that I have is encoded at 192 and this um, This breaks track is encoded at 192 there is a clear difference in the quality of the file and that's what hopefully this video can help show you to understand um, the next thing we're going to stick to mp3s and this is a track that i have by afterman and as you can see um, the cutoff for 320 is 20 kilohertz and even though it might not look like a big difference going from 19 to 20 just one kilohertz um, there's actually um, a pretty significant difference you can tell as the tracks um, get, as the bit rate gets higher, you can tell a more noticeable difference in the quality. And so, one thing that I noticed here is that this actually, the cutoff seems to be very similar to the one at 192. Whereas, if I put this other track at 320, the cutoff is higher and reaches that 20 kilohertz mark. And so, what this is telling me is that this track by Afterman might actually be a 192 just re-encoded as a 320. Whereas this track, I believe that I actually either, I either got off a record pool or bought it, um, is a true 320. And so um, I would say most of the time, most people couldn't tell on most systems, but it really just comes down to what level of professionalism do you want to have and what integrity of sound file do you want to have in your library. And then the next thing we're going to do is a lossless file. So this is a track um, encoded using AAC, uh, which has a bit rate of 256. And you can see there is no cutoff. So this file is not compressed at all. So I'm just showing you what it should look like. And then if there's any sort of cutoff, then you can tell that it's um, perhaps just an MP3 that's been reconverted into what's typically a lossless file, but it might not actually be that. And then for the last file, I'm going to show you, um, this is an AIFF file. And this is, as you can see, 
the bit rate is much larger. So these files are significantly larger than MP3s. And so this is actually something to consider depending on, you know, how big is your library? Um, you know, what's your budget? Uh, because, you know, the files are more expensive on sources like um, track source and beat port in order to get lossless. And then also, you know, you're taking a track that might normally only be, you know, seven to 15 megabytes on uh, in an MP3 format at 320. But then now you're looking at, you know, 50, 60 megabytes. So you're almost if you if you decide to go with entirely lossless format, you're looking at almost quadrupling potentially or even more. Uh, the size of your entire music library and then you got to consider you know you can need bigger flash drives you know faster read write speeds and things like that so um, this is not telling you how to do it each dj has their own method but i just you know i've been going through my music library a lot and i just wanted to show you a tool that i've been using to make sure that the music that i bring out to the club or the music that i bring out to a party is of the quality that um it shows and so Hopefully this can just be a guide and, and help some in the future. Again, I'll have all the links in the description. Um, other than that, I hope you have a great day.